Run it back. Nation. Algo gang. Everybody. What is good? It is your boy DJ Eastwood. Run it back Philly. No frauds, no fanboys, no intros. Haven't done a lunchtime live in a while. Figured uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles preseason being officially over. Roster cuts being tomorrow. I would hop on here. Hang out for about an hour with you lovely, lovely people. Talk about some things. Look at some highlights of... Oh, I said the magic word. It's not highlights, YouTube bots. It's it's uh, it's film. Look at some film. <laughs> Don't say the code words. The bots will get you. Uh, look at some film. Talk about who we think... Um, should make the roster as far as players that are on the bubble, on the fringe. Right off the top, you know, a lot of talk is Jalen Rager. And uh, I think it's a general consensus that the Eagles can't do anything with him right now because they owe him $3.6 million. Uh, I think the roster, I, I think the cap hit, if you cut him, is one8 Um but they're still probably not going to do anything. They're still not going to take that cap hit at at that position, the fifth wide receiver. But if they do, you know who I think should be the guy that gets the spot. Uh, so we'll see what they do with him. Um, Nina, shout out to Nina in the chat. We re we released Jaquaski Tart. <laughs> Just cut Carson Strong. Man, I should be live on Twitter. I should be live on Twitter following along, honestly. Thank you for that, Nina. Let me pop up on Twitter right here and uh and follow along with with the stuff just so I just so I have it. Uh so we cut Carson Strong and uh we released Jaquaski Tart. Now I remember when we signed Jaquaski Tart. Um you know and I had the I had the negative video. I was the one up here saying who the fuck is Jaquaski Tart? You guys are overrating the hell out of him just because he played in the Super Bowl for the 49ers. Uh he wasn't even starting on that team the year before that. He's just not that good of an NFL safety. Um people were freaking out about that signing. Um and I was like, "Come on, bro. Like what what are we really doing here?" Uh you know what I mean? So there you have it. John Clark, NBC. The Eagles release Jaquaski Tart free agent signing that did not work out. Uh, yeah, don't say. <laughs> um, Pat Culp, uh, not sure why they would put Rager over Pascal on the depth chart. I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't. Um, is that a thing? Is that like a, a like, I don't think they've officially announced a depth chart, right? They're still going to go through roster cuts. Uh, you know, I think you'll see most of them today as our friend Nina already let us know two of them. I think you'll see, uh, a lot of them today, uh, but it has to be official tomorrow at 4 PM. So we'll see what they do. But, uh, no, I would rock, I would rock Zach Pascal at the, at the fourth wide receiver. That's exactly what I would do in the fifth wide receiver. If, if you could, uh, somehow, some way get rid of Jalen Rager's salary, I would, I would rock Deion Kane at the fifth receiver spot, but, um, you know, oh, we released Strong so we could pick him back up. Does anybody know why Carson Strong didn't even freaking play in the preseason? You know what I mean? Like, you know, Reed Sinet, okay, we we saw that he stunk it up. Uh, Gardner Minshew, like, uh, is there really a reason for him for us to be watching Gardner Minshew in the preseason? You know what I mean? Where where the hell is Carson Strong at, man? Carson Kavon Wallace will get cut today. Carlos Rosado says I. Agree with that also. Um, you know, when we drafted Kavon Wallace, it was like, yo, I think just because of that Clemson jersey, just because of that safety coming out of Clemson, it was like, yo, we got a, we got a Clemson safety. And all of a sudden the Brian Dawkins, the Brian Dawkins memories start popping into your head and, and we're overrating the hell out of this draft pick because he's a, a safety that came out of Clemson. Nah. Unfortunately, we've seen more tweets than minutes on the field for Kavon Wallace. Uh, and he got on the field yesterday. Or not yesterday. He got on the field. 
<laughs> yesterday. He probably was on the field yesterday. He got on the field uh, or, or Sunday. He got on the field last season and uh, had one play uh, that turned out to be a big time helmet to helmet penalty on a third down. So the time that Kavon Wallace did get on the field <laughs> wasn't good. Uh, you know what I mean? So that's that. Uh, that's that. Hey, before we go any farther, this episode of Run It Back Philly is brought to you by the best male grooming products in the game, manscaped.com. This is the Lawnmower 4.0, the best razor ever invented. It has a flashlight on it. You can do your business in the dark. It's waterproof. You can do your business in the shower. It has skin safe technology. You can do your business without any fear of nicks, scrapes, cuts, or anything tragic like that. It's just wonderful, man. It's wonderful. In 2022, no, nobody rocks the hair anymore, bro. Like, let's let's call it what it is. You know what I mean? You don't want her to have hair down there. She don't want you to have hair down there. Nobody's rocking the hair down there in 2022. If you are, I I, I don't want to talk about it. But go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code NOINTRO20 for 20% off and free shipping of the best razor you'll ever buy in your life. And it's so good, your girl will probably steal it. All right? So buy two of them. Buy two of them, all right? It's part of the performance package that comes with the Crop Preserver, okay? You got some Crop Reviver. That's 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 deodorant for your boys. And you got the, uh, the Hedge Trimmer, which is a nose hair trimmer because, I mean, I say people aren't rocking hair in 2022. Nobody ever was rocking nose hairs, all right? So the roster cuts are happening for the Philadelphia Eagles, and the hair down there cuts should be happening for you. Go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code NOINTRO20 for 20% off and free shipping. (laughs) That roster cuts and hair down there cuts thing I literally just came up with off the top of my head, and I'm proud of it. Thanks for being here. Weapon X, my guy. What's up, bro? If you guys aren't subscribed to Weapon X Eagles um, on YouTube, you should be because he posts all the best highlight compilations in the game. So if you want to see certain players, certain highlights, uh, film breakdown, Weapon X is your guy. Also, Mr. Crockpot of the Painted Lines, whose highlight breakdowns I use a lot to react to, uh, he's in the description also. So go there. So go there. All right, so of course, um, you know, I want to familiarize myself with some of these guys and some of you guys that that aren't maybe aren't familiar Uh because it's like I, I don't I say all the time I'm not a football expert and it gets very difficult to pay attention to an entire preseason game. I'm just gonna call it what it is. Um so, you know, there's certain players that I'm not necessarily familiar with. Uh on a on a Deion Kane a little bit, but the other two that I'm gonna talk about, you know, uh I wanna familiarize myself with. And for those of you that aren't familiar with, I'm gonna familiarize you also. That sounded weird. Familiarize you. Uh, all right. So Deion Kane, look, wide receiver, 26 years old, born in Tampa, Florida, 6'2", 202, um, went to Clemson, drafted in 2018, and he played for the Indianapolis Colts, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Baltimore Ravens, and now plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, it was a sixth round draft pick. Um, and He's one of those guys, he kind of reminds me of that Travis Fulgham era, you know, where he has such a good build and runs really good routes and has really good hands as far as like ball tracking when the ball gets to him. And you look at all of that combined and you kind of say to yourself, why hasn't he, you know, earned himself like a a, a solidified long-term type of deal in the NFL? You know, so it's a there, there's something there. There's got to be a reason. You know, he was with the Colts one year, the Steelers one year, the Ravens one year. Um, now he's with the Eagles. But I like him a lot, especially at, you know, potentially the fifth wide receiver spot or a slot on the practice squad. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. But I really hope Deion Kane gets a shot with the Philadelphia Eagles and, and gets a chance um, at least to be on the practice squad, at least to be that reserve guy, one of those reserve guys. Uh, and you know, 
AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, we know that. Quez Watkins, we know that. Um, who am I missing, man? Zach Pascal, we know that. That's top four. I think top four is probably pretty much locked in. Jalen Rager is probably going to be there, again, because of the money, because of the draft spot that he was in. And I guess this will be... You know, the 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 year where Jalen Rager basically like, bro, this is your prove it year. This is the this is it for you. You know what I mean? You have to improve on what you've done so far in the NFL if you want to remain on on an NFL roster. You know, you, you were just drafted too high for the uh for the performance, for the for the for the 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Value for the, you know what I'm talking about, man. Need more coffee. Greg Ward. Uh, yeah, I agree with that too, Pat. I take Greg Ward over Jalen Rager. It sucks, but it is what it is. But the Eagles are in a tough spot with it because of where he was drafted in the contract. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, but look, here's uh, here shout out to Mr. Crockpot again for the highlight compilations, and and here's um. Deion Kane's couple of catches against the Cleveland Browns, and then we'll show a couple of the ones against uh, the Miami Dolphins. But uh, there he is at the top of the screen. And I just really like this dude, man. He's good size, good route running. That's the back shoulder catch against the Cleveland Browns that that we all were were pretty big fans of. Uh, great throw by Jalen Hurts, by the way. Back shoulder throw down the sideline. Um, and is a 50-50 ball, and look, I'm I'm gonna go out. On, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I don't think Jalen Rager makes this catch. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody at the number at the potentially number five spot. Oh, that was Gardner Minshew with the throw. My bad. Um, I don't think anybody with the that, that that's that's in line to be the fifth wide receiver, whether it's Greg Ward, Rager, or somebody else. I think Deion Kane's the only guy there that makes that fifty fifty ball catch, and I like him. And I hope he makes the roster. Minshew Mania again. Oh, that that was the same play. Same play. Another back shoulder from Minshew Mania. Dion came with the 360 snag in the toe drag. That's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. That's great stuff. Toe drag swag. That's good stuff, man. Reed Sinet. Was that Reed Sinet, number 10? I can't even keep up, man. I can't even keep up. Now that's Minshew, isn't it? Oh, I started the video over? I'm the worst film breakdown guy ever. Uh, All right, what's next? Damn. Oh, that was it? That's all we get? A couple catches? Okay, that was it. I didn't start it over. It started over itself because that's all there was. Shout out to everybody in here, man. Hit the like button. Algo gang. Keep it going, man. Uh, here's a couple of the catches from Deion Kane uh, against the Miami Dolphins. There he is at the bottom of the screen. Nice little out route. Snag. Get the feet down. Look, I know it's the Miami Dolphins. I know it's, you know, their uh, was this their starting crew? Well, they had they had Tua and uh, they had Tua and Tyreek Hill in the game for the first quarter. Um, so you know, was this their starting defense? Either way, nice route, gets the separation, gets the feet down. Dank burrito. Jalen needs to work on his back shoulder consistency. Well, he needs to work on. His consistency <laughs> in general, right? You know, he's made some nice throws. He's made some nice back shoulder throws. The one to Devontae Smith last season for the touchdown was a, was a perfect back shoulder throw. Um, you know, and then and then there's there's balls that are just uh not even close to accurate um at the same time. So yeah, consistency is is what Jalen Rager need or Jalen Hurts needs for sure. Uh there's a nice no, nice little out route again by Deion Kane. Not even an out route, like a hitch, like a go, like a stop route. 
keeps the separation, maybe a little push off with the left hand. We're not going to say anything. Stays in bounds and get a couple extra yards and a pass interference penalty, I think. Or did they call that offensive? I don't know. Uh, and there's Gainwell. You know how he does. He gains well. Um, what do you guys think in the chat, man? De uh, Deion Kane, yes or no? Should Deion Kane make the Eagles roster? Uh, Richie MC, AJ Brown helped out Rager, expected a 180 change last year. Greg Ward was the vet in the wide receiver room. I would, uh, I don't know, man. Is there any helping out Jalen Rager? You know what I mean? Is that really a thing? Like, we're, we're all grown men here. We're not children. Jalen Rager is not a high school wide receiver. You know? Well, is it really like Jalen Rager disappoints for two seasons and then A.J. Brown comes in and now Jalen Rager's good because A.J. Brown, what did, he, what did he help him with? You know? What did A.J. Brown help him with that NFL coaches, wide receiver coaches, trainers, couldn't help him with the process what's up only on a new team he can be serviceable yeah, I, exactly exactly change of the old change of scenery idea um see that's tough new jack tv man that's tough uh kane makes the team rager gets traded look who the hell's trading for jalen rager that's the thing. What do you see? You know, I guess the Eagles at this point, you would kind of take whatever somebody's offering. So a seventh round pick? A seventh round pick? I, I think that's possible. I think a fifth, sixth, or seventh is possible. If you would end up with a fourth, that would be kind of crazy. But I think it's one of those guys that the, the, the place that he was drafted – will always kind of be a selling point, right? 12th pick in the draft or whatever it was, 20th pick in the draft. So first round, former first round selection. What did we trade? Uh, I was going to say, what did we trade JJ or Sega Whiteside for? But we got a safety in that deal, didn't we? Um, Eagles wide receiver coach is Aaron Moorhead. <laughs> But yeah, uh, you know, do you really see a team giving up anything for Jalen Rigger? I guess because he's a former first round wide receiver that a team will tilt will still take a chance on him. Uh especially because of his age and things like that. So hey, I hope they can work that out. Seriously. I think it would be best for him to have a change of scenery and it would be best for the Philadelphia Eagles to move on for Jalen from Jalen Rigger and uh, you know, to let Deion Kane make this squad. Uh and as far as Greg Ward Jr., man, I don't know. I, you know, he's one of those guys. We, of course, we overrated him uh, his whole career so far because we were in that situation with the with the lack of wide receivers that that year that everybody was injured. Deshaun Jackson goes down. Alshon Jeffrey goes down. Carson Wentz is thrown to a bunch of Best Buy employees, and you know, uh, Greg Ward ends up being that guy, especially because he caught that touchdown ball against the Saints from Jalen Hurts, and it was just like Greg Ward Jr., Greg Ward Jr., but realistically, he's a practice squad wide receiver, I think. So, A. Blink, what's up, my man? King Clips, Rager's going to be working at Target in a few years. <laughs> Damn. At Target. Damn. That would be the ultimate fall off. All right, look, man, let me get through some more, uh, a couple more clips of some players that I think have a potential to make the roster. Reed Blankenship. People have been talking about Reed Blankenship a little bit uh, because of some of his some of his performances in the preseason. And uh, I'm going to admit, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely familiar with Reed Blankenship, so we just got the Wikipedia up here. All right, uh, 23 years old. Safety, that's always good for the Philadelphia Eagles because we never have one of those that pans out. Uh, 6 one College, Middle Tennessee, undrafted in 2022. And the Eagles sign Reed Blankenship, uh, you know, to the whatever training camp roster, undrafted. So we'll see if he 
makes the squad. But of course, my guy, Mr. Crockpot TPL's got the got the highlight reel. Every play and tackle from Reed Blankenship. Am I on the right one? Yeah. Every play and tackle from Reed Blankenship uh, in the preseason. So let's check it out, man. There he is coming down from the top, downhill. I like a nice hard-hitting safety. I like a nice hard-hitting safety. New Jack, do you think the Eagles will keep or trade Dillard? Uh, you know, I don't. I, I think they should trade him because you don't really see him getting time on the field with the way that that the offensive line is looking right now. But please, 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 don't trade him to the damn Dallas Cowboys. Here's Reed Blankenship right here, and like I said, man, I like I like me a nice hard hitting safety. Bang, let's go. A guy that comes up and looks to make a hit and gets low, goes for the waist. Bang. You see what I mean? Doesn't hesitate. Look, you got, I don't know what corner this is right here, but I really like his aggression from the safety position making tackles because a lot of these guys, especially the last couple of years, uh, with the Eagles, man, you see guys like Kevon Wallace and other guys that you wonder why they don't get any playing time. It's because when things like this happen and a running back gets into the backfield, they stand there and wait and they wait and they wait. Like they're afraid to make a hit. You know what I mean? Blankenship's not afraid to make a hit. My man comes in like a speeding bullet from the top. Let's go. Bang. Look at this man. This is this is this is him. This is him basically playing linebacker in this situation. Falls for the fake too right here. Recovers and still makes the tackle. I like that a lot, man. I like that a lot. Do you think Carson Strong or Reed Sinet will make the roster? Well, we didn't get to see anything from Carson Strong in the preseason, which sucks, but uh you know, Reed Sinet was so bad, I almost would just sign Carson Strong. <laughs> just so I don't have to see Reed Sinet again. <laughs> Let's get another blank and ship hit. I love how he goes for the legs, man. I really love how he gets on the legs and, you know, even wraps up the leg. Wraps up the leg. Follows through. The guy's a fundamental tackler, man. Goes for the legs, follows through, and wraps up the legs, man. There he is again, man. As far as coverage from the safety spot, you know, I'm not really sure. I, I haven't seen much on Reed's, uh, 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 Reed Blankenship, but he's a really good tackler, man. There he is again, man. He hunts out legs. You know what I mean? You know how coaches used to get mad at, at you in high school or, or middle school or whatever when you hit someone high? Get low! He hunts out legs, man. It's like a, it's like a, one of those Australian cattle dogs. I used to have an Australian cattle dog when I was a kid. That little, they called it a blue healer. It would bite your ankles. It went straight for the ankles. That's what Reed Blankenship is, man. He's a healer. Goes straight for the ankles. <laughs> this dude hits, man. I love it. He didn't even go for the ankles on this one. He went shoulder to shoulder, popped him out of bounds. Pop. I mean, yeah, you know... uh, Kevon Wallace, if if Kevon Wallace gets cut, uh, oh my goodness, how did I miss that? All right, look, this tackle alone tells me Blankenship makes the roster, and I've seen enough. <laughs> look at the oh man, you were right. Who in the chat said he decletes people? He's all the way up here. Look at him, man. He's a headhunter. 
Let's go. He's like, please let a seam open up so I can make this hit. Boom. The drive. He's on one knee. The drive. <laughs> All right. Reed Blankenship. That's a yes for me. I, I never, I didn't see that play. I don't know how I missed that. Yeah, this guy's a hit. This guy's a dog, man. This guy's a dog. He has to make the team. This is the best tackling safety I've seen on the Eagles roster in a long time. What'd you guys think, man? Jaquaski Tardy might sign with the Eagles after the first week for money reasons. You might be right. You might be right. He's better than Kevon Wallace. Absolutely. Kadir Ali, that tackle alone has to put him on the team. I agree, man. I agree. And, and I agree he's better than Kevon Wallace. Um, yeah, Wallace got to go. Wallace got to go. Wallace wasn't drafted high either, was he? All right, let's look at a corner, man. Let's look at Josh Job, another guy that, you know, people have been talking about that I don't know much about. I'm not an expert. I'm just eye test these with that's all, man. I watch things. I tell you what I think. Um, Josh Job, cornerback, 24 years old out of Miami, Florida, 5'11, 190. Hey, shout out to the 5'11, 190 gang right here. Actually, I'm like 182, but uh, Chester Academy, Alabama. That's where I know him from. I knew I've heard this name before. He was good at Alabama, right? Undrafted? Um, and the Eagles sign him uh, to the training camp roster. Undrafted. National champion 2020 with... Is that Jalen Hurts' year? Is that Tua? Is that Tua's year? When Hurts got benched and Tua took over? I don't know. Times are flying. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. Hey, Brandon Lewis, thanks for subscribing to the channel, man. Appreciate that. Yo, Issa, what do you think happens to Carson Strong now that he got cut? I don't know, man. You know, I, like Carson Strong, it's that's like it's very interesting to me, the Carson Strong situation, because I remember him being talked about as a highly touted quarterback coming into last year's draft. Like two years ago when I was looking at what quarterbacks would be available in last year's draft, before the whole Carson Wentz thing happened with, uh, you know, and then Jalen Hurts took over and things like that. But I remember hearing Carson Strong's name all the time. I thought he was a big-time prospect. Now he goes undrafted, doesn't even get on the field in the preseason. What's up with Carson Strong, man? I don't know. But here's the Josh Job uh film shout out to mr crockpot at the painted lines new jack tv job really impressed me all preseason a good pickup and yeah i think you know with, with the the way the eagles roster looks everything they did in the off season the offensive line defensive line we already know that um improving the linebacker position the way that they did is one of my most exciting things i think about this upcoming season you know nicobe dean and 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 hassan reddick and uh kazir white and all those boys I'm excited for that, but I, I always say the biggest question mark still is the secondary and the safety, so it's nice to see some guys that are, at least in the preseason, making a little bit of a name for themselves. Um, so let's check out some Josh Job highlights right here. Nice tackle. Nice tackle from Josh Job. I mean, he gave up a first down right there. He got beat on the route. I guess it's a highlight, though. Made the tackle. Where's the route? Let me. See. You can't see it. It's at the bottom of the screen. Um. Hey, we, this this these couple of positions. The secondary has been so bad the past couple of years, man. Um. It's nice to see you guys tackling. <laughs> you know what I mean? You remember the. Nate Gary days of the Philadelphia Eagles. Alex Singleton days. When you guys were trying to convince me this is an underrated, this guy's can overcome and knock it off. Uh, so, you know. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it, his his. Uh, I'm seeing tackling. I'm not seeing any like pass breakups or anything. He, you know, if you get beat and then you make the tackle, I guess that's better than getting beat and not making it. That was a nice one right there. That was a nice one right there. Gang tackle, gang tackle. Uh, Carson Strong has a degenerative knee condition. Is that true? Is that why he... That sucks, man. I didn't even know that. That sucks. That's a nice... Hey, look, Josh Job, man, you know, just like Blankenship, I don't know about the coverage so much. Because I can't see much from these angles, but as far as tackling, these guys got some fundamental tackling skills, man. Seek out the hips, get low, wrap up. I like it. I like it. You like the Olympic wide receiver, um, Devin Allen? That now that's the I think that's the only one in here, the only pass breakup that's in here. But look at him one on one on the bottom of the screen. 50 50 ball. Man, get that out of here. I like it. I like it a lot. We'll see. We'll see about Josh Job as far as the Philadelphia Eagles roster cuts go. Uh reminds you of Rasul Douglas. Richie MC, what's up, man? Shore Parks tweeted, Strong was bad to start training camp, and at that point, they basically stopped having him throw it. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Um, I think my guy, Mr. Crockpot, has a Devin Allen, has a Devin Allen highlight reel in here, too. Let's go check that out. Let's go check that out. There you go. Shout out to Mr. Crockpot, man. He's got all the highlights. Go follow him on Twitter. He posts all the highlights, man. Oh, I said the magic word. He posts all the film. Don't let the YouTube bots get you. Um, Special teams highlight for Devin Allen? <laughs> That was crazy. <laughs> this guy's an Olympic hurdler, man. You got to stick with him. Look at him right here. Who's winning this foot race? This guy or an Olympic hurdler? Uh, yeah. You know who. And he had the, you know, 60-yard touchdown grab from uh Reed Sinet in the preseason game also the uh the Jets game Jets game I think ooh listen De <laughs> Devin Allen just flying down the field trying to take people out man look at this oh look at the look at the skills right here watching the ball and the man watching the ball and the man, I got to get a tool where I can like draw on the screen. <laughs> you fucked up right there, man. Look, you're in the preseason returning punts. You can't muff it. You should have called a fair catch or let this thing bounce. And then you said, oh, shit. I got Devin Allen coming right at me. And you looked away right when the ball got there and then you muffed it. Yeah, look. I like Devin Allen, man. 
I like a, I like a, a, a hard nosed special teams guy like that. And you, uh, I think it, with his speed, you know, you almost have to try to use him somehow, some way. I don't know if he gets on the field, um, like during games as a wide receiver, even though he had that 60 yard touchdown catch from, from Reed Sinet. I don't know if he gets on the field ever as a wide receiver, especially with how deep, maybe a couple years ago when the Eagles didn't have any, but it's how deep their receiver core is now. I don't see that happening, but special teams. Yeah. I don't know the, the Rager thing, man, we're going to find out it's going to happen today or tomorrow. Like we'll see if they trade him. I don't know what you can trade him for. They're kind of, they're kind of at a, kind of at a crossroads with the Jalen Rager situation, man, because, you know, he has a contract because of where he was drafted, and it's tough, man. Can you trade him? I don't know. I don't know. Britton Covey's getting cut soon. Yeah. yeah I, I think if I had to choose between Deion Kane, Devin Allen, Britton Covey, I would, I would cut uh Kovey also but nice little quick nice little quick slot receiver uh as far as I know I didn't watch a lot of him but uh my guy Mr. Crockpot also has a Nakobe Dean highlight reel on here and you know, let me know if I spell his name right. Nakobe Dean. Where you at? 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 Um, I can't find it now. There's my guy Weapon X NFL Eagles. What's up, man? In the chat right now. Follow Weapon X on Twitter. What's the handle? What's the handle? At Weapon X underscore NFL. Follow my dude, man. Uh, where is Mr. Where is Mr. Crockpot at, man? There we go. I want to watch. I want to watch uh, his uh, Nicobe Dean highlight reel too, because y'all know how excited I am for uh, Eagles linebackers. You know what I'm saying? How many years have we had poor linebacker play? And I think we're finally going to have good linebacker play. Yeah, Faust Out Loud says Mr. Crockpot's legit. Yeah, bro, I'm telling you, man. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel at The Painted Lines. He just posts all the highlights. I don't even know how he does it as fast as he does it. Seriously. Like a Sixers game will be over, and Mr. Crockpot will have like Tyrese Maxey's Highlights, James Harden's highlights, Joel Embiid's highlights, all separated. Bang, bang, bang on Twitter. He's on top of the highlights, man. You need to change your name to Mr. Highlights. All right, here's N'Kobe Dean, who I'm very excited for. The fact that he fell in this draft to, to us where he fell to is incredible. Um, Fell because he's undersized, technically. Fell because he had a mysterious pectoral injury that he kind of claims didn't exist. <laughs> I don't know. The, the story on that is weird, but hey, Howie Roseman, dra Howie Roseman drafted him. And all we can do is is be happy about that. And I, um, we'll, see if he get, we'll see if he gets a start week one, man. We'll see if N'Kobe Dean gets a start week one. Okay, drop him back and see... This is what the Eagles linebackers have been bad at for a long time is coverage over the middle of the field. And you see Nakobe right here. Doesn't fall for the play action too bad, right? Right here in the middle of the field, play action. Steps up a little bit, says, oh, he doesn't have the ball. Cancel that. Backpedal, backpedal. Gets back into the middle of the field. And... Comes down and uh, Sam Darnold hurts his knee. 
That's Sam Darnold or Zach Wilson. I never can tell the difference between those two players. I don't know why. Let me see that one again. There's N'Kobe Dean right in the middle there. Hiding behind. Who is that? There's Jordan Davis right there. Who's this? That was nice, man. A little sneak attack. Look at him hide behind the defensive lineman. Running back thinks he has a gap. Running back thinks he has a hole to hit. Nope. N'Kobe's right here. Bang. Let's go. I think he's great, man. I think he's great. I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to be a great like run-stuffing linebacker, and I think he's going to be a great coverage linebacker. Fundamental tackling, man. Target the hips. Ooh. Look at this one. He sees the gap that the running back wants to hit. He sees the running back, uh, or the, what is that? Who's who's swinging over here? Is that a wide receiver? Yeah, he sees the tight end. Tight end comes to block him. And he says, you want to do this? Let's do this. Boom. <laughs> Pancakes the tight end and simultaneously makes the tackle. Is that what happened? Pancakes the tight end and trips up the running back. <laughs> the pancake tackle combo from the Kobe Dean. I love it. All right, let's see what he let's see what he did against Cleveland, man. A little chase down tackle right there. They gave up the first down, but nice tackle by the Kobe Dean. You see how I'm telling you, man, this kid has really, really good instincts. A lot of linebackers right here bite on this cutback and try to fly in this gap and make the tackle. And he, and he, he kind of, he's kind of a step ahead of the running back right here. He hesitates. I see you bouncing outside, and I'm going to bounce outside. That's good stuff right there. That's good stuff. That's real good stuff, man. He's really good at reading player movement and and like not biting. Look, we got Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean, man. Like we added Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean to this defense. That's exciting. Tripped up a little bit, gets back on his feet and makes that tackle. Oh my goodness. Look at him jump this gap right here. I don't know if that's a design blitz or not. But he sees exactly what's going down. Man, he was ahead of everybody on that play. Dolphins trying to run this decoy end around wide receiver. Nicobe doesn't fall for it at all and says, I know exactly what's happening here and jumps the gap before anybody even has a chance to block him. That's good stuff. That is great stuff from Nicobe Dean, man. I'm excited. Um, shout out to, uh, somebody was in the chat when I, when I first popped up here and said, this is going to be the longest week and a half ever. <laughs> it is man. It is. It sucks. We got to wait a week and a half. Got to wait a week and a half. Um, till the season starts September 11th game one, uh, running back Jason Huntley is being released. According to Mike K Huntley could have been the kick returner. Uh, yeah, let me check. Let me check out, uh, Who's like who's like on top of things when it comes to Twitter and and the Eagles stuff? Like like John Clark's a little slow for me, man. Um, Elliot Shore Parks is on top of things. He's just annoying sometimes because he's a troll. Uh, 
Yeah, Eagles are cutting Carson Strong. Um, Broncos release Sam Martin. What are the eyes for? Are we supposed to sign Sam Martin? I don't know. Uh, two quarterbacks, heavy at cornerback, some Howie Roseman trickery. Toughest decision for the Eagles 53. Which young corners to keep and not risk to waivers? Keep or trade Jalen Rager? Which backup offensive lineman to keep? And what to do at safety? Um, and so the Eagles, uh, they cut Carson Strong. But I think he can, That's that might be a money thing, right? And who did you say? Jason Huntley? Who did you say? Jason Huntley? Hey, thanks for everybody participating in the live show today. Dropping the knowledge in the chat. Letting your boy know what's going on as I try to as I try to follow it on, on Twitter here. Uh, Mike K. There we go. Why, why am I not following Mike K? Seems like he's he got some some reporting quickness. Uh the Eagles have informed running back kick returner Jason Huntley. He will be waived in final cuts. Um, and here's what he did. Uh, let's just peep this, actually, because I don't think I've seen this play either. Uh, yeah, I thought Huntley was good, man. I thought Huntley was good. I thought Huntley was good, man. You know, the, the Miles Sanders in the Jets game got like two snaps, right? And then Kenneth Gainwell, who you already know, it's Gainwell season as far as I'm concerned. That's my dude. I'm excited for Kenneth Gainwell. But Huntley played like most of the... Huntley played like most of the uh, preseason snaps, man, and I thought he was solid. You know, and if you're, if you're going to keep, I mean... Who's the third running back? Oh, uh, Boston Scott. My bad. I, why do I always forget about Boston Scott, man? So, Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott. Uh, do they keep four running backs on an active roster? Does Huntley go to the practice squad? He needed to do more kick returner. That's why he didn't make it. That's a damn good run right there. That's a good run right there. So he, Huntley was terrible, <laughs> was he? Uh, it's hard. It, it's hard for me to tune into all these preseason games. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's the most boring thing on the planet. Um, was he terrible? Really? So he didn't make the team even at a kick returner slot. Why? Why? Who's the kick returner? Who who gets who gets kick returner? Uh, Devin Allen. Is Devin Allen the, the kick returner that made it over over Huntley? Is that where we're at here? Am I am I am I calling this correctly? Well, Huntley gets released, uh, gets waived, according to Mike K. Um, so that's interesting. That is interesting. So we released Jaquaski Tart. We release Carson Strong, and we release now Jason Huntley. Uh, yeah, it's all part of the biz, man. Part of the biz. The edge of Kwaski Tart was cut. Uh, Kahir, is it? I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Um, yeah, Jaquaski Tart was cut, or it was informed that he'll be released, or, you know. So Jaquaski Tart, Carson Strong, Jason Huntley, so far. I guess we'll sit around and wait for some Jalen Rager news, man. I'll be glued to my phone today, waiting for some Jalen Rager was traded news. I need a I need a bomb, dude. I need a I need a Jalen Rager was traded bomb. That's what I need. But yo, thank you guys for tuning in. For Lunchtime Live, I appreciate each and every one of you up in here. Please hit the like button if you're here. I would appreciate that. 
that helps the stream get pushed to more and more YouTube viewers. Britton Covey will be the punt returner. And kick returner? Everybody at kick returner is terrible. That's the problem. Well, I mean, is is there like an NFL team that's like, we have a great kick returner? I mean, I think kick returners are just players that aren't good enough to play at their position that are then the kick returner, right? <laughs> Not like you draft kick returners. <laughs> Um, that's funny. I'd like to see McPherson get reps at kick returner. That's interesting. Acewood, did you hear Gilbert Arenas saying Giannis doesn't know how to play basketball? No, I didn't hear that. I don't give a damn what Gilbert Arenas says. We got to stop giving these dudes the attention they want. Gilbert Arenas is a guy. Look, I made a podcast. I made a YouTube channel. I I, tr I sit up here and try to give you my honest opinions. There's there's people that used to make a lot of money in sports or TV or radio, whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> Dan Cilio, uh, that then their last resort at continuing to be relevant is making a podcast or a YouTube channel. And then they just say ridiculous things to get people talking to try to bring traffic to the YouTube channel or the podcast or whatever it is. You know, but it's, uh, I don't know. Like, who's, who, it, it, are people waking up in the morning like, um, I have to go listen to Gilbert Arenas podcast? I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, man. That's just that, that that feels to me like the Danny Green podcast. Like, bro, nobody checking for that. Gilbert Arenas doesn't care what others think. Well, uh, nobody cares what Gilbert Arenas thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Some people care, I guess. I don't. Giannis doesn't know how to play basketball, though. Hmm. It's an opinion. Arenas has his own channel. I know. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. You make a YouTube channel and you say crazy things to get people to talk about it. I know. I know that. It's not. A, it ain't hard to have your own channel. You click at the top right and you say create YouTube channel. <laughs> Giannis doesn't know how to play basketball. I mean, I, I don't particularly enjoy liking watching Giannis play basketball. I guess I'll say it that way. I, he knows how to play basketball. Like, I wouldn't say he doesn't know how to play basketball. He's 6'11 and can dribble the ball like a guard. Uh, I just get annoyed because Giannis gets away with everything. At, you know, he's all, he already has the advantage of being the size and athleticism that he is. And then... You know, they give him three whole steps. He can take one dribble, take three entire gallops down the court, and there's they, they they never call traveling on Giannis. Like, this guy already has the biggest stride we've ever seen, and they never call traveling. And then, and also, like, one of his main moves is dribble the ball, hold it like a running back, shoulder the living hell out of whoever's in front of him, and they never call an offensive foul. And on top of that, he'll get a foul called on the same play. So a play that probably should be an offensive foul most of the time he gets and ones on. I can't stand the way the, the NBA officiates Giannis. But I wouldn't say he doesn't know how to play basketball. I get annoyed by how much he gets away with. But it's a business. It's the NBA. and they, you know, They want the superstars to score points because that's what makes them money. So it is what it is. Yo, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm up out of here. I'll catch you guys on the next one. It is your boy, DJ Eastwood. Running back Philly, no frauds, no family.